On the 21st of December 1998, the UK was left devastated after facing its deadliest terror attack. A Pan Am jumbo jet with 258 people on board has crashed tonight just north of the Scottish border. The aircraft, flying from Heathrow to New York, was destroyed by a bomb 38 minutes after takeoff, crashing down in the sleepy town of Lockerbie, and the explosion was devastating. All 259 people aboard were killed, with 11 on the ground. One of the first on the scene was our very own Lorraine Kelly. This morning, police continue their search to try to ascertain what caused this horrific disaster. 35 years later, and the explosion to this day remains the largest terrorist attack to have taken place on British soil. Now in a new documentary, Lorraine Kelly returns to the site she reported at 35 years ago and she joins us today. Thank you so much Good for coming to, to tell you. us about this. Good to see um, you. I actually remember this 35 years ago. Um, let's go back to the beginning and what do you remember from that day? Just getting the, the call to, to go and, and being there incredibly, incredibly quickly. And it's like you were saying, Alison, you remember it. Yeah. But an awful lot of people don't, you know, they don't remember it because back then there wasn't 24 hour news, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't all of these things. So part of going back was to really give Lockerbie its place and especially the people of Lockerbie who were so kind to us. And, you know, because an awful lot of people there, you can understand, they, they want to put it behind them and in many ways they have. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's really important for us to, to remember that it was the worst, you know, terrorist atrocity, not just in this country, but in Europe. And yeah. I think sometimes we forget that, and I think it's really important to remember. Yeah. We've got so used to seeing graphic images yeah. of just catastrophes and sadness, haven't we, because of mobile phones. But actually, when you think back in... 1998, you know, there wasn't that. that much of it around, you know? No. And, and I'm just wondering, you... As a young reporter going on site and seeing the scale of that, what, what was that like for you? It, to be honest, it felt like a war zone. It's the nearest I think anybody would ever come to, to experiencing what, sadly, what our armed forces have to experience. And it was like that. And in a way, because it was so utterly unreal, yeah. um, it didn't quite hit you at the, at the time. And of course, back then, um, nobody, there wasn't counselling offered to anybody, you know, like who was affected by it or anybody who, you know, lost somebody or, you know, or, or experienced it, because the whole town experienced it, of course, and 11 people on the ground died because part of the, the aircraft landed on, on their houses. You know, and people had bodies raining onto their, onto their homes. I mean, you, you know, you're sitting watching the telly in your house, maybe having your tea. It's, it, it, it's unimaginable what people went through there. And I think we have to very much pay tribute to that and remember it. And you, I watched it last night and you talked to a guy called Peter, oh, where that Peter. actually did happen to him. Yeah. And what's interesting is it's 35 years on, yet he's still oh. completely affected by this. He is. You know, he's yeah. crying, he's, there's yeah. tears. But he found a lot of emotional support from the family as well. Very much so. And the bonds, this is a thing that's astonishing. Oh, Peter, he's just lovely. And for him to, you know, to, to, to allow us to, to talk to him and to, to reenact that. But you're right, you know, 35 years on, still experiencing that because people didn't get the help that they needed. It was that way of, oh, you soldiered on. You know, even if you've experienced this trauma, you just kind of got on with it. I'm so glad that attitudes have changed now. That wouldn't happen now. Yeah. And a lot of that is down to what happened to, to people in Locker because but, you know, three quarters of the people there had PTSD. You know, they, they experienced that. Of course they did. Mm. Of course they did. And I learned so, so, so much about that. But also, do you know what? Human beings are amazing. We saw the absolute worst of people too. Who, the, the, the people who would, who would do that. And you can't even begin to understand what's going on in their head. So you see the worst of humanity and you see the best, you know, because like you mm. said, those bonds yeah. that were from those friendships, you know, people, you know, people, particularly in America, who didn't really want to come back to Lockerbie because they thought it's death, it's fire, it's mm. horrible. And then they come back and they get a sense of peace and then make friends and all the absolute wonderful acts of kindness that people in Lockerbie did, opening their hearts and their homes yeah. to people from all over the world. It was amazing, and, amazing. And it's worth bearing in mind, Lorraine, this, Lockerbie wasn't targeted. It just no. happened to be that the, the plane was going over or That's, near enough to Lockerbie as the bomb was, went off. It was because it was delayed. It was delayed, Craig. It was coming from Frankfurt to Heathrow to JFK in New York, and it was delayed at Heathrow. It was supposed to explode. It was time to explode over the Atlantic. Right. But because it was delayed at Heathrow, it went... But can you... I mean, it was horrific when you think, 
but that was, Awful. I mean, just... I mean, no matter what, a horrible loss of life, wherever... And it's... But, but, and but you but think the community to, yourself, yeah. to make peace with... It, I know. It could have been different. It could, and it's astonishing to think the waste, you know, we, we talked to people and what was lovely was that you felt a sense of, of some of the people who had who died or who were effectively murdered, of course they were, and you got a sense of, um, you know, there's one girl, uh, Nicole, beautiful, beautiful girl, so talented, and in the documentary we hear her singing... And she was, oh, she was amazing. And we talked to her sister who hadn't talked before. Um, and also her best friend was supposed to be sitting beside her on the plane, but decided to go to Germany instead for Christmas to relatives there rather than wow. go home at the very last minute. And of course, she's having to live with survivor guilt. Yeah. And mm. She's having to come to terms with that. And just so, so sad. But they all say they find a sense when they come to Lockerbie and they go to the Garden of Remembrance and talk to, you know, residents and these friendships that are formed. It, it does make them feel... Better gives them a sense of peace, and that's yeah. good. That's, that's it. Good it, it, it. It is like, well, it's a, a, a place of remembrance as well it, now, it is isn't it? very much And so. in terms of getting over something like that, whether you ever get over it, I don't yeah. know, but dealing... Yeah, with you live PTSD, with it, I guess. Right? Yeah. I mean, you have, we have to try, don't mm. you? But there was so much post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. There was so much of it that it's only really been diagnosed over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, there was one lady I, I talked to, Gillian, lovely Gillian, who, she was only eight, when it happened, and she was very close to Sherwood Crescent, where the crater was, where the 11 people from Lockerbie died. And it was only, it was not that long ago that she actually died a, a total nervous breakdown. I can't believe that. And she told, you know, she's a midwife, she's got an incredibly, one of the most difficult, but most caring jobs you could imagine. Um, and she hadn't really ever come to terms with it, and it took that long for her to process it, and thankfully to, to get the help and the understanding that she needed. It's, it's, we were talking about this earlier, is when you're a young reporter, and like, I've been there, you're sent out to a story, you yeah. don't really think about it, it can be something really awful, you mm. might see something, but you kind of you hide it away because you just got to get the story out there. You kind of have to there. distance yourself in a way, yeah. but, but something like this, I mean, obviously, of course, it affects you with human beings, for yeah. goodness sake, but, yeah, I, I was lucky that I was able to talk to my husband because he was there as well. That's why we got there so quickly because him and I got there very, very fast. And was he the cameraman? Yeah, we were able to. He was, he was the sound man at the time and, and you know, everybody did all the different yeah. jobs but he, you know he he and I were able to talk about it I was able to talk about it with my dad my dad picked me up on Christmas day and you know the usual you know you won't want to talk about this and I spent the whole journey back to Glasgow just talking about it but it was the right thing it was good but it, just, talking is so important oh, is I know Allison, Carl, Colin yeah. the policeman he, he's only just talking about it now he is and he was only 18 I mean the, yeah. there was a lot of really young people especially first responders that were going out into the hills and finding bodies and there were young young guys yeah. and girls and he was very young but his way of, of coping with it too is that when people come to Lockerbie he helps them he shows them all around and answers all their questions and, and with such kindness and compassion you know, it's, it, it really is remarkable. It's been You've incredible. got to watch it. If you haven't seen Thank this documentary, you. you have to watch it. It's on ITVX, ITV1. And obviously, you, you, t you talk about PTSD and then you don't want to talk about the fact that you suffered with it well, as well. You, see, you didn't I, feel like you was No, alone. I don't think that I, I... It would be like you, Craig. You'd go, no, no. I, don't, I, don't, I, was, mm. I was only reporting on but it. You so, have that because as, you, was getting, you were getting nightmares. Yeah, but as a... Yeah, I was only I was only sort of witnessing it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But of course it affects you. Of course it does, because we're human beings, and it has to affect you in that way. And and it was more than just a story that you're covering. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And especially going back and meeting everyone and everybody again. So thank you yeah. to everyone in Lockerbie for being so so kind to us and and kind to the team. Um, it's important to remember the people who died. It's also yeah, it important is. to remember. A friend of yours who Yay. sadly passed away oh, way, way oh, before Hannah. time. Hannah, Hannah, a producer on the Lorraine Hannah. show. And uh, oh, there God, she is. God rest her soul. Isn't that the most family. beautiful photo oh. of Hannah? Oh. We were, I mean, we knew she was, we knew that her cancer had come back. Um, and, you know, that's baby Rory, isn't it gorgeous? We knew it'd come back. One of the last things that she heard was the single, you know, the single Golden, Golden with Joss Stone, no. for goodness sake. Which right now, I, I can't believe this, and Hannah would be laughing about this as well. We're up against the Beatles. Have you heard of the Beatles? <laughs> they're they're <laughs> very good. But yeah, this has been um, this has been incredible. This thing because the choir is made up of people who watched our campaign, yeah. um, the Change and Check campaign, and who now are going to be all right. And, you know, it, and it just goes to show how important those campaigns are. Oh, Alison, it's been it's been phenomenal, and you know, and it is dedicated. The single is dedicated to to Hannah, and we just yeah, it'd be lovely to beat the Beatles. So we have to download it.
Yes. We have to do that. Yes. And yeah. you know what? Do you not think at this time of year you want to make a wee donation yeah. to charity? So it's the way of doing it. I know you were talking earlier yeah. about the charity singles. And They're all amazing. Lovely, and you get a lovely record. Indeed. Remind everyone what it's called, where, where they find it. Golden, golden, and you can get it. You can download it. Don't where, ask where me where. Where you download, where you download things. You can ask download you, it. Ask one of your children. They'll <laughs> they'll they'll know. Know. Get a small no, four-year-old no. child to help you. <laughs> yeah. They'll be able to do it. Return to Lockerbie with Lorraine Kelly, ITV1, ITVX. Thank you so much.